A warm welcome to today's webinar. It's great to have you all here. Today we are going to talk about targeted and active distribution of content. This is part three of our webinar series, Rest in Peace Press Release Distributing Content Online. In the first two parts, we already talked about content marketing in general and how to create a content marketing campaign. My name is Anne Katrin Gottke, and I'm marketing manager at Eology, and I'm responsible for our webinars, among other things. As always during our webinars, I'm accompanied by a colleague. Today it's my colleague Linda Hartung, who is outreach expert at Eology and who is very familiar with the topic of content marketing. Linda, good to have you here. I'm going Hi. to turn the microphone over to you so that we can get started right away with today's topic. Hi, thank you, Anka. My name is Linda, as Anka already said. I'm an outreach expert and I'm working for Eology for over three and a half years. So a little uh, part to us as Eology. We are an online marketing agency and we offer search engine optimization, paid advertising, content creation and content outreach where I am located. Today we're ta uh, talking about targeted and active distribution of content. Um, first of all, uh, we're uh, yeah, talk about the quality criteria for our linking pages. We uh, talk about the research of linking sites, uh, how do we get and how do we do, uh, do research. Then uh, the project management, uh, after that we talk about pre-outreach and in the end the active outreach. So, but first uh, let me uh, uh, talk about the, the learnings of uh, the first part of our, uh, yeah, of our webinar series. Uh, we learned that classic press releases usually offer too little, little added value and do not attract any attention anymore. The alternatives are, for example, native advertising or content marketing. And uh, content marketing is perfect for created uh, added value for your users. And the definition of content marketing, it is the design and the creation of relevant content that adds informative, advisory or entertaining value to the target audience. Another learning is uh, you make a distinction between the strategic and operational content marketing. Uh, you can use creativity techniques uh, to find topics and to develop innovative ideas. And uh, you do an evaluation uh, to determine the best idea in the end. And the next step is to design and implement the campaign, which we learned in our part two. So uh, there are different variants of, uh, for a content marketing product. Um, uh, the decision about which medium is the right one must be made individually. So if you do a white paper, an ebook, a graphic, uh, infographic, whatever you, you want to use, uh, you should definitely uh, yeah, involve experts to increase your quality of the content and the content should be precisely defined in advance. Also, a realistic and working schedule is indispensable. You have uh, to make a uniform and an appealing layout for a landing page and for the content marketing product, which is very important. Uh, the landing page should be ad free and quality control in the end is essential. So today uh, let's talk about uh, the first chapter, the quality criteria for linking pages. We have different quality criteria, for example, the main authority, also the actuality of the page. Uh, next one is, it has to be a real website and not a spammy bot created one. Uh, you have to have the SE, uh, Systrix Visibility Index, which is called and the development. Um, we mainly use the Systrix Visibility Index, but it always depends on the country which, uh, which uh, yeah, number, which data you want to use. The domain authority is also uh, possible, which is uh, from the tool MOTS. And of course, you can use whatever tool and whatever data you want and what you're familiar with. But just be sure to do it uh, uniformly and use the same uh, criteria all over so you can compare the data all over. So next one is the topic relevance. Um, the imprint, if it's necessary in your country, and if your linking page has social media challenges, uh, channels, and of course, the serious and appealing structure. I will give you an explanation and examples about each criteria in the following slides. So 
First of all, let's talk about the visibility index, the Systrix visibility index, which is a key figure that indicates how well a domain can be found on Google. And it can be therefore understood as a value that reflects the market share of a website on Google. Um, to calculate the visibility index, uh, the top 100 positions of a predefined keyword pool of over 250,000 search queries are recorded and evaluated, and the results are then weighted according to the position and search volume for the respective keywords. So, for example, the, the 10th place of a very high traffic keyword can result in a higher value than the first place for a rarely searched for a search a keyword or search item term. And in addition, the weighting takes into uh, account and the different click rates that go hand in hand, which the position and the visibility is also influenced by values such as the ranking keywords, links, ranking positions, all over that. And um, the visibility index gives alone a little clue. So it always has to be set in comparison with other pages uh, out of the same, the same group, the same value. And um, yeah, the Systrix uh, Visibility Index is available for about 30 countries, and not all countries use the Systrix uh, Index. Uh, for example, UK or USA, they mostly use the domain authority from us or any other index you want to use. So I got an example here for you. Uh, you can see here the New York Times, which is a pretty uh, high uh, quality magazine, and the independent.co.uk it also has also a very high number of, of uh, 146. And uh, in comparison, buzzfeed.com only has a SI of 17.44, but which is also pretty, very high. But for example, a blogger have a lower SI as they don't have so much reader as they maybe have a special topic, um, a niche topic. So um, the higher the better, but you always have to compare it to websites which are on the same level as yours. We also look at the development of the visibility index. Um, here, for example, the uh, index of New York Times. It should always be stable or be positive. And uh, some fluctuation is just normal, like for season changes or maybe daily search query change, changes, but positive or uh, steady uh, development is perfect. And there should not be any punishments in the late, uh, yeah, in the, yeah, from a month, or it should not have a negative impact with any Google updates. And as the Google updates publishes regular, uh, or Google uh, do regular core updates, for example, and we do not really know what Google uh, uh, has now changed at the algorithm and what exactly is the goal of the one core update that a negative uh, impact is now what we want. So be careful for that. So we already talked about the domain authority of Moss. It's, um, yeah, Moss in total is an important tool in the international market. It's um, uh, the basic functions are available for free, but um, you can also, uh, yeah, book a pro version available in English. And it's also available as a browser extension. And <clears throat> yeah, the Moss Pro CO tool is one of the all rounders of CO tools. And the functions of the two include site audits, rank tracking, backlink, backlink analysis, and keyword determination. And um, also, it supports the user in all phases of the optimization process. And um, yeah, like many other tools that are now available, Moss offers the possibility to research and track particularly worthwhile keywords. And in this, it displays a monthly yeah, volume to keyword difficulty and so-called opportunity and the priority in a clear way. So it's pretty um, all around tool. We also have a definition here for the domain authority. It indicates how trustworthy a website is on its topic and the authority of the page results from the various factors like domain trust, text quality, and the quality of backlinks. And also technical factors are included, for example, loading speed, clarity of URLs, the encryption and the page architecture. And uh, Mass also offers the spam score, which indicates the percentage of websites with similar features to the studied website that have been classified or yeah, as penalized or blocked by Google. And the spam score is uh, based on a machine learning model that, is, that identified 27 common features 
among the millions of banned or penalized websites uh, in the data rented by Moss. I, as I uh, told before, there's also the, the browser uh, extension, which looks like this. It's, uh, yeah, just uh, on top or below your browser. Um, and you can see there's also the first uh, PA, the page authority. And it's a MADS protected metric ranging from one to 100 that predicts how well a page will rank in Google, like the URL you're looking at right now. And uh, yeah, it uses a machine learning algorithm for this link matrix. And you can see the domain authority and the spam score as well in the extension. What you also have to pay attention to is the imprint. Is uh, there an imprint obligation in your respective country? For example, in Germany, there's an obligation to have an imprint. So any German website without an imprint should not be used by, <clears throat> for your uh, backlink building. And there should also be contact data, for example, email address, telephone number. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so you can contact your webmaster. And also the format is important and it has to be a text. So you can just copy paste the email uh, to your, yeah, email, yeah, mailbox, whatever. And it should not be a picture or a text uh, on your pic a picture. And yeah, keep attention to it if you have the obligation and if not, just leave it out and ignore if there's an imprint or not. Yeah, also when we uh, do quality checking for websites, the topic relevance is very important. You only want to publish your link on the topic relevant page. So it's because Google algorithm is constantly evolving and therefore the higher the topic relevance is, the better for your website. And the links are from thematically relevant pages have more importance than from uh, thematically irrelevant pages. And apart from the algorithm, uh, more meaningfulness with thematically managing pages will be created. And the integration makes more sense for users than when you just publish it on a randomly selected page with a different um, yeah, topic focus. Also, I... Uh, talked about that before you want to do you want to have a real website so what is a real website it yeah this website should be created primarily for the users and not only for the search engine so there yeah it should not be a spam page that only exists to sell links and you you know if it's a spam uh, website if like in every or almost every article there are links to commercial sites to shop sites um a mostly extreme wide range of topics from technology to fashion, which uh, only like, uh, is, yeah, important for smaller websites. The big websites, is, it's clear like a news website, New York Times that they, um, yeah, cover each topic of the world, let's say like that. And um, uh, another bad sign for uh, a spammy website is when there's an online marketing agency in the imprint. So there should be always like, a journalist, an editorial office, maybe a single person in the imprint so that you know it's like a real website and the real person is standing behind it. Also, the actuality is very important when it comes to quality criteria of, of your linking websites. And you should ask her the question, are new articles published regularly? Um, it can be regular posts like once a week, once a day, uh, more than one a day or maybe for example, once a month, it's totally fine if it's regularly, but when articles were posted weekly in year before, and now no new article was published for about three months or whatever, it's not a good sign. So it's not really actual, uh, the website. So uh, think about how long ago was the last publication? Is it in the regular range or is it uh, yeah, wider range? And if the last publication was a long time ago, it's unlikely that traffic can be generated that Google looks at the website as it's, yeah, new as it's actual, as it has actuality. So yeah, keep distance to them. Also the structure is very important. Um, first of all, it have, has to have the legal requirements, for example, the cookie notice, the imprint, whatever is uh, yeah, necessary for your country. It has to have high quality content. It should be a visually appealing design, uh, the structure, um, yeah, 
correct spelling and grammar on the in the articles uh, yeah everywhere in the footer whatever uh, you you see on there it has to have a clarity is there a menu where can you navigate is there like a search bar where you can enter keywords to look for an article you're looking for yeah and next part is uh, does your website also have social media channels like are there some available are they maintained so do they yeah, look after their content, what they're posting, after their comments? Are they posting regularly? And also how big and how active is the community? So in the end, um, maybe there's also a possibility to get a social media mention or a social media post for your content marketing campaign. And always keep in mind that an active community with many followers makes a domain very attractive. So it's not has to be as many followers as maybe like the high class influencer but it has to be a good ratio between uh, the follower number and the active community. So be sure that the followers are not maybe bot or maybe just like not real persons. And uh, yeah, after all. Also, your website has to have a content area available. So it has to, yeah, to provide an opportunity to place the content. And you want to publish your content, of course, um, in a content area like a blog, a magazine, maybe a guide, the news section, or maybe the recommendation page. And if you have an online shop where there are only articles in the shop or only, yeah, no possibility to, for publishing any content, then it's not perfect. Then they don't know, you don't know where to put your content marketing campaign, where to put your backlink. So these are, it's one website, one point. We should rather react keep the distance for it. So here we summarized every criteria as a checklist. So you can easily check off each point when you're checking uh, the website. You have uh, the topic relevance, the visibility history for districts, the mouse, whatever data you want to use. Uh, you have a possibility for publication. There is uh, uh, the domain is actual, uh, they have recent posts, is uh, there already a link? You don't wanna have a link from a website you're already linked on. So it should be the first link for your domain and it has to be a social media relevance. And of course the page, page structure should be logical. So now we yeah, get to know what quality criteria you should be considered when looking. Uh, yeah, when looking for linking websites, when uh, searching for them. So now we can over can go over to the next step, the research uh, of linking pages. So the appropriate link giver can be, for example, influencer or influencer websites, bloggers uh, with their blogs, associations, theme portals, guide, guidebooks, organizations, can be clubs or even newspaper or magazines in your uh, special yeah, topic. And um, yeah, how do we find them? Where do we find them? Of course, we use the Google search. Um, we, we, where we search for the suitable phrases, questions, single keywords. Um, yeah, just whatever fits to your topic. For example, when you, um, when you use the example of the Spice Guide, Spice Guide ebook, we were looking for food bloggers for a topic maybe uh, uh, yeah spices of asia um, uh, things like that just um yeah type it in the google search and see what google gives you for um search results and therefore it's uh, yeah it's helpful to use the incognito mode because there are no preference and yeah start for your search behavior from the past so it doesn't influence your um, google search you can also use the synonyms and similar search queries you can uh, yeah, use parameters like the inside in URL to look for special keywords. And of course, uh, there's also other search engines than Google. You can also use them, of course, for when looking for uh, yeah, suitable websites or linking websites. <clears throat> there's also another source of Google, which is called Google Alerts. It makes it easy for you to get new search results to your yeah, respective keyword and um, it alerts you when something new is published for your chosen keyword uh, and it just comes easy per mail into your mailbox and um, usually at the beginning of each outreach process of a new content marketing campaign and um, we set alerts for the most important keywords 
so it makes us the research a little easier um as yeah the the fitting results the results that fit perfectly to our um yeah to our topic just come into our mailbox and then we just check them for our quality criteria if they have a visibility index if they're like the website is uh, logical and whatever uh, i told you before and now we have maybe a new possibility for a website and for a new back backlink and maybe you have to try out uh, yeah which keyword is giving you the best results and if there's one that yeah maybe doesn't give you the perfect ones just change it so readjust it so you get better results for them too you can just play with it try it out and you can even yeah notificate uh, the, the yeah the set your notifications in a selected rhythm for yeah, when you want to have it, uh, maybe daily, maybe weekly, or maybe more times a day. So it's pretty easy and it just comes right into your mailbox. Also, of course, you can use tools to find backlinks. Uh, for example, you check the backlinks, uh, the backlinks of your comp competitor of your campaign and what they got already. You can, of course, uh, yeah, use tools like Systrix, Ahrefs, SAMrush, or the LRT. And then you can export the backlinks with the help of those tools. And now you can sort everything, every website you found for your important quality criteria and use only those that, uh, yeah, which fulfill your criteria. And of course, um, just review and look at every page so it perfectly fits into your criteria. So for example, for a spice guide, check spice shops, check, check food websites, food bloggers, all which are in the same topic. So check which websites are linking on the, which links, uh, websites are linking on your spice shop or whatever. So maybe they will even link on your spice guide. So uh, yeah, that's also a pretty good, uh, yeah, uh, source for backlinks. Also, if you maybe need to find new topics to find backlinks, maybe what else is there besides of food blogs and food websites? You can even brainstorm with your colleagues and maybe even some who are not involved in the project. When somebody comes from out of the project, they maybe have a different yeah, point of view. They have other starting points or maybe they bring in new impulses and new ideas to get your campaign yeah, going uh, to find more websites to maybe find more topic relevant websites and yeah, just give it a new impulse and new ideas. When you have found research results, of course, you first, um, yeah, you have to check it, uh, your domain for the relevant quality criteria. And after that, you have to collect them in a central list. For example, uh, we always use a OneDrive list and you always have yeah, to add some more information so you can, in the end, work with them so you can contact them. So first of all, the check the, for the quality criteria. Um, yeah, look for the stable, the positive SI, the visibility development. Um, is there, yeah, are there punishments? There should be no punishments, of course. Um, is it suitable? Has it a suitable category? Is um, maybe a suitable article available already? Does it fit into your content marketing campaign? And check if you have a link already to your link uh, project or maybe, yeah, not. It sh should be always a fresh domain and, and not one where you already got a link from. And on the other hand, um, we collect all the domains, all the websites, all the articles where we can work with our content marketing uh, project. Um, we collect them in one draft list and we put all those information in there. So we put in the domain so we can do, uh, yeah, avoid duplicate domains. It's not good if yeah, your coworker uh, yeah, asks the same website for a cooperation and you do the same with just another uh, spokesperson. So, um, it should be all, only one domain, maybe different articles, but only one domain of this. Um, also, the URL where the link should be placed, maybe if you want to do an article add-on. For example, the Spice Guide would fit perfectly yeah, in an article about spices of Asia. For example, if the article is already there, you can just add it on there. If there's no article yet to spices, you can, of course, ask for new articles, so just then um, put in the category, which would be in this case, of course, the category food, 
or recipes, whatever. Um, also put in the date and the responsible person. Um, when the outreach process goes over many months, it's always good to know when the website was found and who entered it on the website, who was responsible for it. So for example, when the person is not available, you can just comprehend, you can just follow up what the person was up to. Also, the status is very important. It shows where in your outreach process you are, like, is it already contacted? Was it not contacted yet at all? Are you maybe waiting for an answer? Or is even the article in writing? So maybe it was also uh, already a positive response. And also note down if your uh, request or if your yeah, request for a cooperation was declined. So you know, you don't have to yeah, ask them again. Maybe even write down the reason why it was declined. So you know if it's yeah, possible to ask them maybe later because now timing was a problem or if they're just not interested at all. And in the end, at the contact person, the webmaster, the blogger you were talking to or you were writing to, so um, you know your person where you, uh, when you have answer, yeah, when you have more questions, when somebody else wants to ask some questions, or maybe just uh, it's, it's the right person for your topic. Yes, let's go to the next topic now. The project management. You may be asked, why do you even need project management? Well, it's um, always important uh, to keep an overview. So a project manager usually keeps the overview of all of the project. So if you have more, uh, yeah, if you have a whole team, there's one who keeps the overview of all, everybody. Um, they also allocate the resources correctly. They keep an eye on the schedule and they adjust it if necessary. They maybe even like give a push if you're behind the schedule. They can also improve teamwork. And of course, uh, they check your research uh, results. We do it like the four eyes principle. Um, so you can be sure this website is perfect for your content marketing campaign. It fits perfect and it fits into your quality criteria. Sometimes you just miss one, one thing. You forget to look after the imprint. You forget to look after the actuality. So it's better to have another person look over it so it fits really perfectly into your quality criteria. Also, uh, yeah, why is the four eyes principle? Um, yeah, building poor quality links should be definitely prevented. So your project manager double check so we can be sure to have a high quality website. And yeah, if all quality guidelines are double checked, and overlook this, things are all, almost always be found. So you can be sure it's really high quality. And um, project managers are more experienced and better, mostly yeah, yeah, working longer in this, in this case, and may uh, mostly better able to judge the issues. And of course, a second view of, often brings clarity. If you're maybe unsure, or if, if you're not sure if the website really, really is, um, yeah, really perfect for you the project manager usually has um, the best view and brings clarity. Yeah, the task of a project manager are uh, to organize a team, to set goals like a weekly, a monthly goal over a project goal. And the goal, for example, can be to get five publications, to get five links per month. And of course, of course he has to review your research, uh, yeah, results, research suggestions. And also, uh, he or she is a contact person for questions from the team. If there are any questions concerning the website, the project, the topic, whatever, the project manager should be there. Um, he's, he or she is also responsible for link management, for example, if the link and, and the article are placed correctly. Uh, the project manager takes care uh, that the link stays online, that it yeah, fits into the criteria of the link building. And yeah, in the end, of course, such as um, success uh, measurement and a recap of the project worked everything out well. Um, maybe, yeah, draw conclusion for the next time, um, needs there to be more adjustments, whatever. That's all a project manager can be there for. So let's go, go to the pre-outreach. Well, what is a pre-outreach? It's, um, yeah, in order to generate attention in advance, contact is already made with suitable websites during the creation phase uh, and during, yeah, before the campaign is, uh, yeah, 
finished. And before the, the ebook is finished, when, when the ebook is still in the writing process, and um, just made contact with um, yes, little website webmasters. So um, we contact the websites and tease the content, show them what they can have, what uh, show them the added value they can have. And we name the topic. We tell them which appearance it's gonna be, like a graphic, an ebook, white paper, whatever. Um, we even give yeah arguments why the campaign is worth supporting, why they should link to it. We get to the arguments a little later, and yeah, we also tell them the current status and the, the launch date of the campaign. So yeah, it's also yeah possible that we can go into the planning of the webmasters, uh, yeah, editorial schedule there. They maybe have on schedule and they say, okay, week one, they publish this uh, topic, week two, they publish another topic. And maybe if we can uh, get in this process of planning with our content marketing topic, okay, maybe we'll change it for it. Or we can even yeah, jump on a topic that would be published without us, but now we can be in there. And yeah, as soon as the campaign, as your project is online, we can send it to them and they can publish it right away. So you have, um, yeah, signals, backlinks right at the beginning or right, uh, yeah, before, uh, right when the, when the ebook or whatever is published. Some more tips, you, um, yeah, it's important in the pre-outreach process to choose uh, the timing appropriately, not too early as it may get forgotten, uh, forgotten or the webmasters do not want to wait any longer and they just publish an article about your topic, but without your content and uh, they do not want to insert your link uh, to your campaign afterwards and also not too late so they can maybe think about it they can talk about it in the team and uh, yeah they can just answer you what they think about it also um, yeah you can draw conclusions for your campaign is it generating interest or is it not interesting at all and if yeah, maybe uh, the answers are mostly negative, you can still adjust your content on your topic or maybe change the focus of your topic. So yeah, just uh, check if the topic should be reconsidered or just keep it that way if they like it. Yeah, when the pre-outreach is finished or maybe you don't want to do a pre-outreach at all, and when everything is online and now available online, you can now start with the active outreach. Therefore, uh, the first, uh, yeah, the first persons you maybe want to contact are your experts that were working on the content, that were working on the ebook, that have an interview in their guest post, uh, expert interview, whatever. Use them as a, as multipliers. They could share it on the social media channels. They could publish the article on their own blog if they have one maybe on their own website, their own yeah, magazine they're working at, whatever they can yeah, include it in their own newsletter on social media, whatever they have uh, to, yeah, to spread the content. And um, yeah, include your expert, not only in the writing process, but also in the distribution process. So that is your first uh, yeah, part for the multipliers of your campaign. Yeah, I talked about the arguments. And, and your link. So first of all, your content can bring traffic and maybe new readers, new visitors to their page. Uh, it's, yeah, just for them, they can uh, attract more readers when they have, yeah, an article for your topic. They have also a little effort. The article is delivered by you and it all ha only has to be integrated. And maybe you even do an, yeah, an article edition, uh, which is even less effort so as only the link has to be integrated. So not much time and not much work effort. Uh, it could yeah, bring an added value for their reader. It could be, be yeah, better user experience and could, uh, could yeah make interesting or funny moments, for example, for the reader. Then also the positive image building, for example, with the social and emotional topic where readers notice that the page, the webmaster, the blogger deals with such things. And um, yeah, you can also mention the experts that are in the 
yeah, inside your ebook uh, so you can get your expert status. And of course, the quality content um, as we deliver a high quality article for free of charge. So um, you give them the article, you write the article exactly for them. It's a unique article which only exists on their page. So it's even less work effort for them to do. So maybe that's also an argument where they want to, yeah, where you can convince them to yeah, publish your content marketing campaign. Next one, you always have to make contact with your webmaster first. So we always make the first contact by telephone. Uh, for uh, of course the personal contact breaks the, uh, the ice faster you get more yeah a personal connection with your uh, person on the phone and your campaign can be presented much better maybe doubts maybe questions can be answered directly and get rid of them yeah when you have uh, you, when you want to contact large portals like large websites high quality websites um, magazines big ones yeah just uh, when you have just a uh, yeah, phone number of the central station uh, the central of uh, of your yeah of the website and um, to get the right contact person is absolutely necessary so you don't want to write an email to the info at um, address um, so mostly this email doesn't get to the right person or it will just be ignored or maybe even lands and trash can right away so always get to the right person and also talking over the telephone shows the importance um, of you your project and the importance of the webmaster you're contacting and you take your time you talk with them to show them respect um, you yeah you just take your time to explain them everything to answer the question and you can get on the emotional uh, can get on the emotional level with them talk with them on their yeah, on their level, and you don't get that over an email. And also be, be flexible with your ideas, with the topic and with your cooperation, what you yeah, want to do in the end. And um, when you give them only one choice, it's easier for them to say no, because they maybe don't like the one choice or what the one idea you have. But with more ideas, with an open-minded approach, it's much more likely to get a backlink from them or maybe a cooperation with them than when you only offer them one idea. And in the end, you may be getting publication of your campaign. And yeah, if you want to make or offer them an article add-on, not a new article, but just the add-on on an uh, yeah, already published article, you can then uh, convince them just easier uh, in the, in, of the relevance in person than when you would write an email because in the email you can't even yeah, write everything down what you would like to talk about actually. So when you do a preparation for the phone call, um, first of all, uh, identify the correct contact person if that's possible. For example, um, is there an author of the article in the beginning at the end of, of the text? Um, is there an information about the contact persons in the imprint or maybe on the contact page of the website? Um, yeah, then when you found them, note down key points and what you want to say. Um, never formulate it like in, in, in text, just make key points so um, you just can talk normally and it doesn't sound memorized or insecure. And um, also, we also different have a different procedure for article editions and for a new article, which we're talking about now. The article edition, um, <clears throat> you have to tell uh, your person, the contact person, why your campaign does offer an added value to them, to their website, what information is not yet in, in included in the article, and why your content marketing campaign can give them this information. And always look for um, yeah, a point where your link, where your content marketing campaign could be integrated. So always bring concrete examples where it could be added or what you can do together to publish your content marketing campaign. When you're uh, talking about a new article, think about one to three topics that have not been covered yet on the website and that fit uh, well with the previous topics published on the website and be open-minded and flexible. So you can also be open for new ideas where ideas are from the webmaster maybe he or she has yeah, other ideas, maybe something in mind. 
which um, they already yeah thought about but didn't know how to yeah how to bring to the paper how to publish it so you can help them now and if you're prepared it shows you give the respect you offer a real added value and it's very important for you and for them to work together and to get the cooperation started and yeah to have a successful uh, experience for each of one of you then how to do a phone call first of all of course it's uh, important to get connected to the right contact person you don't want to talk uh, to the one sitting on the reception you want to talk to the author that is uh, yeah that is the person for your topic for example the food blogger uh, the 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 chef of, of, of the, the magazine, whatever. Um, then briefly introduce yourself and ask the person if they have a few minutes uh, talking to you. Uh, that's very important. So because if the contact person is in the middle of a task, they may not answer very positively or when, yeah, because they're just, yeah, under time pressure. And maybe if you, yeah, ask direct what would be a more convenient time for them, or maybe you arrange even an appointment for the next phone call. Um, they, when they have time, they're able to talk completely without any time pressure. They're more positive. They don't have any problems uh, or yeah, in the back, back head and are free and open-minded to talk to you. Then, uh, yeah, describe your concerns, um, like with the motto, as detailed as necessary, as short as possible and present your arg arguments and openly answer the questions they maybe have and always send an information uh, email information afterwards and of course at the same time ask for the email address for the email address of the correct person and not just the info ad uh, address and then of course say goodbye politely we have a checklist here for you for the follow-up of the phone call so always send information by email uh, in, uh, yeah, important is, for example, formulate the subject like correctly, for example, article supplement for planting uh, native herbs in the garden on the New York Times. Um, yeah, make the reference to the phone call and say thank you for the phone call, thank you for their time. Insert your URLs to your ebook, for example, and maybe even to the, to the website you're talking about and to the article you're talking about as hyperlinks. And always ask for feedback. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Um, yeah, uh, just have a feedback so you know where you're at, what you can do if you yeah can contact them again or not. And then um, in the end, enter uh, the status in your research list. That's also very important so you know where you stand. If they decline uh, decline your request, always ask why. Maybe it was just an inappropriate timing and then you can contact them uh, later on. And maybe it's not possible at all or they are not really interested in it. So it's not necessary to contact them again. So just go on to the next slide. And if, um, yeah, if you don't answer right away, set yourself a reminder to ask for feedback within a week or maybe two weeks. Um, so you, maybe they just forget to answer. They didn't see the email, they were on holidays, whatever. So they, it just plops on, on, on their mailbox again. And maybe this time they will answer you. So the procedure after the commitment, when you both agree on a cooperation on a publication should be as the following. Um, you deliver the agreed text or the article add-on as soon as possible, of course. It should not be a yeah, big time span in between uh, saying yes or in, agreeing on the cooperation until the publishing then <clears throat> of course uh, when you publish the article a new article the reader address the wording the format whatever has to be adapted to the linking page to the page of the webmaster then of course set up a briefing for your content creation for your editorial office so they know what to write and which topic they want to write and how long it should be and you as an yeah as you're doing the outreach as you're the, the expert for the communication with the webmaster proofread the finished article and maybe search for suitable images uh, material and um, maybe even some other more information to send to your contact person when we're uh, yeah 
<coughs> giving a text briefing to our content creators, um, they will get the following information. So the, they can write the text as best as, um, yeah, and as suitable as possible. First of all, they need to have the number of words. If the webmaster gives you a number of words they want to have, just give them them. And if they don't have an idea or whatever, just use a minimum length so that the topic can be written comprehensively, but not too long. The linking page, of course, so the editor can look for the reader's address, for the wording, for the format of the article on the website, and maybe some words they're using. Um, also, you have to add the link target, so the link target to your content marketing uh, campaign, so your, uh, yeah, your texter knows what to link to and what maybe is already in your content marketing campaign. Maybe they can get information there for their text. And also the topic as concrete as possible. <clears throat> so also name some aspects would definitely have to be inside the article. Um, maybe some points, some wishes the webmaster had before. So the article will be in the end, like you wished, like the webmaster wished and like you were talking about with the webmaster. So everybody is, yeah, just uh, uh, happy with the article and the webmaster will publish the article without any more uh, changes and adjustments inside. When contacting, we have, uh, yeah, we have a motto, which is called polite persistence helps. And we always rely on that when doing outreach. It means that even though you did not get a feedback or an answer right away, it's not always a no. Just keep persistent, but be polite. And mostly you can make it into a yes or maybe uh, into a maybe, and then just be polite persistence, uh, persistence again and then you can make it into a yes. So polite persistence help, just use that motto and you will get better results in total. Some more tips uh, when you're having an, a total outreach team, uh, yeah, uh, communication of course is the key. Do a weekly tour fix for regu regular exchanges, uh, do communicate success, consider strategies, Maybe if you have any problems, look for solutions together. And um, you can even do brainstorming in large groups, which uh, often yeah, leads to good ideas or even new ideas if you maybe like are yeah, stated in, in some ideas and don't know any more uh, topics you can yeah, look for. And use employees who are, all, uh, who are involved in the topic. And that means, um, for example, distributing the SPICE guide build your team with employees who love to cook, who love spices. Who, um, they have the perfect side on the topic and they can distribute the content more emotional. Uh, also when they're their own experts of your spices and um, this topic, uh, yeah, it shows a greater competence of them than from somebody who does not cook at all and who doesn't have any idea about spices. Also, yeah, in order to keep, uh, keep an overview about the, the publications, the articles, the links you have already yeah, brought online, it's necessary to use, a, or it's a good idea to use a tool. For example, you reuse Contentbird. It offers you any advantages. For example, you can enter all arranged corporations. So you have all information of the successful corporations in one place in this tool. Um, you can also save the links that went online and the tool will monitor them uh, for you. So it, the system crawls it regularly, uh, the links you entered in there and reports them as soon as they're offline um, and you want to keep them online, of course. And you should write down information, notes, data of your contact person. So if you have another question, if the link is offline, maybe you can contact uh, the right person right away and maybe get the link online again. And yeah, link offline can happen, but it's mostly not on purpose. It's maybe offline because of a relaunch, maybe technical issues uh, occurred. And uh, they're mostly happy if you tell them something went uh, offline because they think maybe they didn't even realize it went offline and they don't know that some articles are not yeah, available anymore. So they're mostly thankful when you tell them. So that's all about our outreach process. The next steps, uh, yeah, the can uh, come after that. 
just what I want to say is uh, the outreach process can vary, of course, for different countries. For example, yeah, phone calls don't really work. I just want to have emails. Maybe in some countries it's the other way around. So it doesn't, yeah, it just, it depends on the country. But in total, the procedure can be used everywhere. With little adjustment, so just check what your country is, yeah, what they have for, what, what they want to have. And it's always helpful to have language experts that uh, can contact the webmasters in their own language. So yeah, I have uh, like the same uh, language level and can uh, yeah, explain uh, the, the project to them in their own language. The next steps after the outreach, um, you can listen in the next video, the part four after outreach is, is before outreach, follow up of the campaign. Uh, yeah, we talk about the evergreen content, the control and measure success. You, we compare it with classic link marketing and maybe you can even recycle the content. You can push it with paid ads or dream marketing. And of course, you can um, draw you some learnings for your next campaign. But before we end today, we have the learnings for part three for today. So uh, quality criteria uh, for the linking pages are mandatory. Next one is research can be done via Google search also Google Alerts or competitor analysis, among others. Um, you can use joint brainstorming with colleagues, which often brings new ideas, new impulses, and new starting points. And your research results should be collected in a central list. So we have all in one, um, yeah, in one document. The another learnings um, are about the project manager, which uh, reviews the research results before they are contacted. You can do a pre-outreach in advance to generate interest and to get initial feedback. You can, uh, you should always use contact via telephone, uh, which is always preferred over emails and a functioning link management helps you to keep track of your campaign. That's all from me. I will give the microphone over to Anka again. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Linda, for all the insights and information. Now, if you want to know what to do after your content marketing campaign, Linda already told you about. So check out our part four of our webinar series to learn that. I also have two reading recommendations for you. So one is our white paper on content strategy and the other one is our white paper on modern link marketing. You can download them both for free on our website. So thanks for joining us today and I am happy to see you next time. And if you have any questions, feel free to write us an email at marketing at eology.de. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening.